Hey guys, me like big boom here and welcome to unturned 3.9.8. Today's update is an awesome one. It adds a major aspect to unturned and that is the ability to build off of vehicles. You can add uh, spotlights, generators, traps, crates, torches, anything that is not like an actual house, like floors, pillars, stuff like that. You can't add those, but anything other than houses you can put on cars. That is awesome. That opens up all sorts of different opportunities. You can now put inventories on your cars. You can put little crates on the back of trucks, fill them up with all sorts of stuff and have um, a moving transport truck to load up uh, supplies. You know, you, you drive your truck through Alberton, you can fill it up with supplies. That is awesome. All right, I'm just, that's freaking awesome. I will get into the specifics of how that works in a little bit, but there were also some other things added in addition to that, and I'll go over those first. Uh, first up, we have a chainsaw right here. It looks exactly like it does in Unturned 2.0. Uh, one thing that you immediately notice is that when you go to fire it, I guess, um, it vibrates like that. That's pretty cool. I mean, a chainsaw is pretty powerful and it's kind of hard to uh, keep still. Um, when it comes to chopping down trees, of course, it's going to be freaking fast. And um, it, it really is. I mean, you can chop down trees just like that. Oh god, it's going to land on top of that car. Oops. <laughs> But yeah, it can chop down trees faster than, like, two people combined with a single axe could chop down a tree. It's very quick. When it comes to killing zombies, it actually performs so well, I think it really should be nerfed. Um, so, I mean, if I gather together all these zombies together, I mean, I'm going to go as far to say, I mean, this is the best, like, weapon in the game. So, I mean, if I walk through the, uh, the airport here... And get quite a few zombies on me all you really have to do is just stand still and kind of just point forward and it will because it's automatic and because it kills zombies so quickly you don't really have to do anything and you've pretty much killed all the zombies in the airport just like that um, I think there there are a few ways that you can like combat this I mean first off the durability does go down pretty quickly when I spawned it it was like at 65 and it's already at 60 by killing all these zombies you could make the durability go down quicker you could reduce the range to point blank like point blank because right now you can hit the wall from like that distance away um, I think if you made it like you had to be touching the tree in order to chop it down and also make it that way for the zombies it would make it less of a destruction machine against zombies. You could introduce a fuel system to all of these gas powered melee weapons or any sort of weapons or you could just simply reduce the damage against zombies. All of those work but right now I think it's it's very very powerful. Also in this update he made the navigation through all sorts of different menus a lot easier by adding both the icons and the names to the buttons or the major buttons at least you can see that the inventory it tells you inventory alongside the little gun right there yeah, there's the crafting skills and information tab and also in the main menu it tells you all the different categories there like play button customization button settings button all that it actually tells you the text in addition to the icon so um, everything navigation wise has been improved a little bit that way I know a few of you guys liked having the word buttons and a few of you guys liked having the icon buttons this is kind of the best of both worlds and I like that also another major thing each of your characters in the main menu now has their own individual single player world so I can be having a let's play character and do a let's play world build some major houses on that world and it will be for that character only but then you create another character and he will have his own separate world that saves on its own and they'll all be separate now some of you guys might be freaking out like oh my god I have a massive house what's happening to it uh, don't worry the save that you currently we're running before the update has now been applied to the first character slot but now if you swap to different characters it'll be a completely separate world and you'll be able to build structures on that one and it will be completely separate also you can combine two different ammo boxes so in this instance I found one with 15 shots and one with 11 shots if you go into crafting and ammo you can combine them two together to create one ammo box of 26 shots just to save space on in your inventory. Very nice. Also, as a result of the building mechanics added to the cars, the hitboxes surrounding the vehicles has been improved a little bit. Meaning that when you go to shoot a car, it will be able to better register the shots as a hit to the car than before. Before it was kind of a, a vague hitbox around this thing. Some, some of the shots would hit in some areas and some wouldn't but now it's a bit more detailed. 
He also made the gun spawn rates around the whole place a little bit lower. I know that I did find quite a few maple strikes in the military base and that will no longer be the case. It'll be actually pretty difficult to find maple strikes now. He also made the turning radius of the ambulance a little bit lower. I know when that was first introduced, I was like, holy crap, this is the greatest thing ever because it turned so sharply. Uh, now it's been reduced a little bit. It's not as amazing, but I'm sure it's still pretty good. He also fixed the glitch to where if you are driving a car and then you swap to the passenger seat and let's say fill it up or equip your gun and shoot at some zombies and then move back into the first player slot, it no longer just freaks out. Before some weird things happen, sometimes the steering would be screwed up. That's been fixed now, so pretty cool. You're now able to craft rifle clips. I will put the crafting recipe for that on the screen right now. And that pretty much covers everything except for the building aspect on top of the cars in this update. There were a few minor things, but you can check that full update post in the description down below. Uh, now let's get into the actual concept of building on cars. Now this opens up worlds of opportunities. Uh, when you come across a car, you can choose to make it like a storage unit. You can choose to make it just a zombie destroying machine. You can choose to make it a defensive unit by boarding up the little windows. It's You can do however you like. Now I have some things in my inventory to kind of show you all that. So I mean if I equip this maple crate, we can go over to the back of this off-roader and let's say just put on a crate on the back like that. Let's say just slap on another one right there. Sounds good. You can now drive around with these crates on the back. And then let's say you find something, you can begin to load it up on the back. Just walk around back. Open up the storage crate. Let's say you found a chainsaw. You can now put it in the storage crate, load it back in the car, and get going. And it's just extra storage units. That's one way that you can use this building aspect on top of the cars. And I think that's going to be the most common. That's pretty awesome. Um, you can also choose to um, make your car like a lighthouse for whatever reason. Let's say uh, you want to go raid some something in nighttime and these these stock headlights are not just they're just not doing justice i feel you uh, you can slap on a generator on there so you just gotta put it up on the roof maybe like that and then also take a spotlight and so because the headlights pointing in that direction you might want to put it um, facing in that direction and you now have some extra light in that area so if i set it to nighttime like so you can see that it's uh, lit up that area a little bit more. Let's say you want to add another one. We can add one right there. Though keep in mind it will kind of obstruct my vision if I put it right there by having a little spotlight there. But you can drive around. You can see that the lighting, um, it, it just lights up the area a little bit more. So pretty fancy. And everything stays on there completely normally. Very cool. I'm going to turn that generator off. Um, you can also choose to make a zombie killing machine by slapping on some spikes or barbed wire on the front. So you can take some barbed wire and just slap it on like that. And uh, you can build off of that as well. This can almost be a little bit overpowered because there is nothing limiting you from just building off forever with this barbed wire and just driving a big line of barbed wire all over the place. Um, I think there could at least be some sort of build limit in terms of how far away you can build off of your structure. Right now Nelson said the only thing limiting you from how you build your vehicle is how unstable it will be. So yeah, you can build a tower of safes 500 feet up into the sky, but your vehicle is not going to be very stable. But I'm imagining barbed wire isn't all that heavy. So, I mean, I've never built this before, so I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm assuming that it's not going to affect your handling all too much. So, just keep it like that. Let's hop right into the roadster. Yeah, look at that. We've got a zombie. <laughs> Let's go find some zombies to kill. I'm not sure if... Will it... Yeah, you can drive the barbed wire through... Yeah, telephone poles just fine. <laughs> so, we can just go <laughs> right on through... Um, let's just head on through here and boom <laughs> we're going straight through the zombies looks like it's not killing them because it's not that strong but it will hurt them so like we can go through Montague with our barbed wire <laughs> roadster and just start destroying everyone you could double stack these to where it instantly kills them but I don't have that much time you can just run right on through here excuse me zombies <laughs> excuse me pardon me <laughs> 
That's freaking awesome. So yeah, these are some ideas over at Cape Rock. I have a few more examples for you guys. Um, you can choose to do like the defensive um, idea where you can build, board up these little windows. Uh, this would be good for multiplayer servers. If you want to just get from point A to point B in multiplayer servers at least, um, people shooting your car is, is kind of an, an issue. So if you board up the side windows, it will make it a bit a bit difficult for people to uh, to kill you because they can't see you. Um, but it also has a disadvantage of uh, reducing your vision. You can no longer look like out... Well, you can a little bit that way, but you can't look um, all throughout these windows because you boarded them up. Um, also, one little glitch that's kind of happening right now is it makes it a little bit difficult to get out of the car when you board up the little windows like that. So that's one way you can board up the windows. You can also use, um, instead of barricades, you can use sandbags, which I think work a little bit better. You can use those. Um, you can also put torches. If, if I mean, if you'd like, you could put little torches here. And there's, there's pretty much no reason as to why you would want to do that, except you could just have fire in your face. I mean, it's just an example. It works. <laughs> so you can do that. Um, you can also make a portable sniping station. So let's say you got your truck here. You can put crates back there as well if you'd like. Uh, but you can be driving around and let's say you want to go snipe some people over in uh, Stratford. You can go drive your portable sniping. Whoa! See, it's very top heavy as a result. So you got to keep that in mind. But uh, let's say you want to go snipe some people in Stratford. Stop right here. There we go, and just climb up your little ladder here, all the way up to the top. Well, because it's tilted, it's a bit interesting like that, but it works. Climb up here, and you get a pretty good view of Stratford. Um, I mean, the trees are in the way, but because it is a portable sniping station, you can, ouch, you can always just drive around how you so choose until eventually you find a pretty good sniping space. Um, I am now stuck in, in the car. You can also make a more advanced version of the like light mobile, I guess. You can turn this on, set it to nighttime, and as you can see, I pretty much have a portable lighthouse going on here. Um, I don't know why you would want to make that, but it is a possibility. And once again, there's nothing limiting you from creating a giant tower of safes. Um, you can build that as high as you would like to make it. I mean, you can do it. Uh, but the thing limiting you from uh, just building something as crazy as this is the fact that driving this car is going to be very difficult. So I have this purple truck here with a bunch of safes, uh, like up there, way up there. And, I mean, you can drive it around. I mean, so far it's not doing half bad. But when it comes to driving off-road, um, it might be a different story. So just, whoa. It, it just no longer wants to tilt. This is weird. Oh god. <gasps> oh! Oh! Oh dear. See, I mean, the car begins to behave very strangely <laughs> if you build stuff. This... Oh god. So, I mean, you can drive it around. It's just, um... It's just very heavy, and it kind of does its own thing, and I don't think it's going to be possible to drive over steep hills and eventually you will topple over and you will not be able to <laughs> to flip it back oh oh can we no we cannot uh oh see stuff like that can happen uh oh it's toppling over <laughs> look at that that's pretty funny i also kind of want to know if you can use a car jack on cars with the structures on them you can but it does not go up in the it doesn't go up as high at least in if you use it on something like this with safes going all the way up it it's not going to work as well um, <laughs> um, but yeah it works Woo. I also want to know what happens if you destroy the car let me just go and see alright so cars on fire when it blows up it still keeps it attached that's pretty interesting um, I believe now if it was, if the car were to disappear, that stuff would disappear as well. 
but uh, that yeah that pretty much covers everything in the update so far and once again there were a few minor additions and changes and tweaks but if you guys like to check those out I'll put it in the description down below Nelson has also been working a little bit on figuring out ways to implement animals in the game he does say that there are some complications with 3.0 than compared to 2.0 but in the long run he does say that hunting will make its appearance at some point in Uncharted 3.0 so that's awesome we just don't know when also when when it comes to powering electrical items if I were to put a generator on the ground right here it would not power the lights up here and vice versa so you can't put a generator in a car and walk around and power spotlights on the road that's just the way it's set up right now I believe they're just two separate little building areas that are um, all their own so keep that in mind when you're building things on cars you guys should comment down below what kind of things you guys are gonna build on your cars and what types of cars I'd be interested to see what kind of things you guys are building you guys should also tweet me little pictures of your uh, giant concoctions that you make on cars it'll be very interesting uh, but as of right now that is everything added in unturn 3.9.8 thank you guys so much for watching make sure to rate comment subscribe and do all that gibberish because you like big boom is out.